Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. We got something a little bit different today, but still mechanical keyboard related. Now we've had this for about a month now. I've been trialing it on and off, seeing if I can get used to it. I'm gonna say the answer I'll leave till the end if I got used to it or not, if I can type fast with it or not. But this video, we are looking at the Keyson Magic for Smart 49 key mini mechanical keyboard. It's a 40% keyboard. It's really small. Look at this thing. That is just tiny, cute little brick of a mechanical keyboard. But it's so cute. It's so awesome. But we'll be giving you a straightforward and honest mechanical keyboard review over this and talk a little bit about 40% mechanical keyboards and let's jump into it. Okay, first a size comparison. This is 49 keys. This is 87 keys. Look at that. What is going on? This is so darn small. So freaking cute. This keyboard was about $50 on Amazon. Links down below if you want to check it out. So this keyboard has Gateron brown switches. They're pretty much Cherry MX equivalents and they're tactile switches. The reason we decided to try out this keyboard was because we've been wanting to try out a 40% keyboard. Now 40% keyboards usually are hard to get used to. They come with no function row, no number row, and usually have a weird assortment of buttons on the right or the left depending on what you get. Some other examples of 40% mechanical keyboards are the Vortex Gear Race, I believe that's a 40%, and then the Plank Keyboard 2 where it's ortholinear which means the keys aren't staggered but stacked on top of each other instead. So this keyboard is so tiny. The back has pretty much nothing special at all. It's got four rubber feet and that's about it. There's no kickstands, there's no nothing, just nothing, but it does have a detachable micro USB port on the top left hand side. It's sort of convenient, it's cute. The cable's pretty regular, nothing special about it. And then it's got a split space bar. The left side is space, the right side is the right shift, and that's because on the right side there is no right shift button, but instead there's an arrow cluster, which is something that we don't regularly see in 40% keyboards, or not that I've seen anyways. Arrow clusters are usually for 65% and above, however, if you have a customizable 40% keyboard, then you can program it to whatever you want. This you cannot program, it's stuck with whatever it has on it. And as you can see at the legends, there are so many things that you can pick from for each key. So for example, if you want to press the at button, like if you're typing out your email and you want the at button, well, you need to press a shift, either the left shift or the right shift and FN at the same time and hold that down while pressing W and that's how you get to the at button. There's other things that are hard to get at, such as the apostrophe, if you're trying to type there, like they are or it's like it is, then you have to FN and L. So just some, just some things that you need to get used to. If you want numbers, you have to press FN and any of those keys in the top row. It's hard. Some of the benefits of this keyboard is that it's super portable. It's really lightweight. You can throw it on the side of your backpack where your water bottle is supposed to sit. Crazy, I know. And it's got a delete key. How convenient is that? And the arrow cluster is nice. Some of the complaints that I have about this keyboard is that it's got a really large escape key, but it has a small backspace key. Like the, the escape key is so large, but the backspace key is small. I would rather have the backspace key be a little bit bigger and the escape key be more small since you don't really use that as often. And then instead of the FNs, being to the side of the split space bar at the bottom. I would prefer them to be in some place that's more accessible and more convenient. Um, like if the FN were to replace the Windows key or even replace the, the right shift, 
and that way you can press easily you can more easily press shift and fn at the same time to get to those lower level layers that you need to get to to type pretty well so it comes with only blue backlight but it does have pretty nice shine through with the keycaps i believe they are abs plastic but they're not super oil attracting compared to other keyboards like the drevo caliber or the hyper x abs plastic keycaps one thing about using something like this is you're not going to be able to replace the keycaps very easily and that's because it has special keys like that split space bar is special and it's got all the legends that you need to see to know what you're typing unless you memorize all of them then maybe you can replace some of the keycaps on there so only blue backlight it does have I think eight or nine patterns pre-programmed lighting patterns with that blue so pretty awesome there's some where you there's some static ones there's some moving ones and then there's some that are reactive so that means if you press something then something happens like if you press B then the horizontal row would light up something like that there's different lighting there's different brightness levels from turned off all the way to extra bright and I think there's five overall with some of them you can increase the frequency of the movement of the light so let's talk about the build a little bit from the top you can see that the top plate is metal and then the rest of the case is all plastic it's super light one thing that we would like to say about these switches is that it's not ringing or pinging at all compared to the magic force 68 key i believe that we reviewed a while back that one was pinging a lot and i think it was because it had otamu brown switches but this has gateron brown switches so just a preliminary sound test for you guys and stabilizers So you're not using that super long stabilizer for the space bar because well it doesn't have a super long space bar so all the stabilizers sound pretty decent there's not a lot of rattle the keys sound really decent there's no ping no ring no scratchy sounds when you are pressing the keys it's just great okay so did i ever get used to typing on a 40 percent keyboard the answer is I'm not bad at it. I'm pretty decent. Um, after you, the first day was very hard. Just not being able to use that right shift, having to think in your mind, okay, you can only press space with your left thumb. And then typing things like numbers and apostrophes, um, that was complicated. And then there's keys that I don't type very often that I don't even know where they are, like plus equals. Um, you, I would have to look at the keyboard. But to be functional with this keyboard, I would say it took me about four-ish days to get to about 40 to 50 words per minute. Now that's 50% of the speed at which I type on a regular keyboard. And that's because there's the shift moving, the apostrophe, and then numbers. There's just a lot of moving parts to learning something like this. Hey, hope you guys are enjoying the review on this little mini sweet cute mechanical keyboard if you like the video and are getting any value from this at all press that thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this one we'll jump back into the, into the review right now you can't play anything with this keyboard you can't press one <laughs> I can't press one I'm changing it up I would absolutely recommend it if you need something to type on with your laptop if you're moving around a lot and you just want a keyboard to type on rather than the laptop keyboard this would be great for gaming it's absolutely terrible I tried gaming with it and I was just like oh, I need to press one I need to press one what do I do and so to press one you have to hold FN and press Q that's a lot of steps when you're in a situation where you have to press one quickly and reactively and it was bad so mid game i switched the keyboard out and and then played like that instead so not a gaming keyboard typing definitely go for it 
However, not I wouldn't recommend this to be your daily driver for a keyboard. It's just it's just hard and typing a long time with it, it started to hurt my wrist probably because of some of the awkward positions that it forced me to assume. Like holding FN and shift often is just strange since they're not positioned where that's convenient for me. So yeah, for the past week, it's been sitting in the box waiting to be reviewed. I I gotta say I wanted to like it and I wanted to love it and I wanted to get good at using a 40% keyboard, but I just don't think it's realistic and the, the outcome just isn't worth the work that you put in. I'm gonna stick to my favorite layout, 10 keyless mechanical keyboards. So let's jump into that typing test. And we'll also do a comparison typing test with the Magic Forest keys, the keys on Magic Forest 68 too, so you can get a feel for the differences. There are different sizes. The 68 one is really good layout. It's really good. It's got the arrow keys in a separate cluster, but it's also got the four different keys on the right side. It's just a really nice keyboard, but unfortunately it does ping a whole heck of a lot. Alright, that's what it sounded like. I'm sorry you had to see me type super slow, but that's just how it is when you have something like this and you're not used to it. So let me know what you guys think about 40% mechanical keyboards or even small mechanical keyboards like, well, 60% is really functional. Just let me know what you guys think about the small mechanical keyboards. Would you ever try it? If so, why and if not then why too i hope you enjoyed the video i'm gonna link you guys to our top 10 mechanical keyboards under 100 dollars here and our tkl friday series here and subscribe here if you want to thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one Poof.